Let us begin. Hi, and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part number two of the Dragon 135th scale Panzerkampfwagen 1 Ausf A. So this is part two of my series on this particular kit. Uh, part one dealt with the introduction, um, the box contents, and all of that sort of preliminary stuff. So in this episode, I'm actually going to start work. This will be a step-by-step -step build, uh, pretty in-depth, and uh, from beginning to end. And one of the things I like to do when I do a step-by-step -step is at the beginning of each video, I demonstrate how I cut off the parts, clean the parts, and prep them for assembly. Um, and then I assemble the parts on a given step. But after a few times of that, I will do that off camera to cut down on the actual time spent <clears throat> on the video and keep it to more pertinent things like the actual assembly and uh, any um, challenges I may run across. So without further ado, let us begin. So <clears throat> first part will be step one, which is the running gear assembly and attachment to the hull. So the first thing I need to do is I need to start cutting off these parts. So let's go ahead and cut off the wheels A4. The reason I'm doing those separately from the others is apparently they are different in some way. <clears throat> yeah, there's two. Looks like they have a larger, uh, they have the, uh, outside part of the where the axle comes through is different this one protrudes this one is recessed so let's get those parts number four cut off so using my handy cutter this is a god hand um, nipper it's a new one pn 120 um, i have been using in the past this tamiya cutter and it's still in great shape but i thought i'd give this one a try and see how it works so what I do in cases like this is I cut the part back from the edge, cut the sprue gate. Then once I have that cut off, then I come in closer because with it being off of the sprue, I feel like I have a little bit more control. So I just put it flush on the wheel there and trim it thusly. Now, one of the reasons I like using a cutter like this is it cuts way better and uh, doesn't, I don't know if you can see, but this side right here is really thin. That side's flat. It's kind of like an anvil. So what this thing does is it slices through and it's sharp, sharp enough that it actually cuts through instead of pinching the part off. So there's less chance for damage. So next, I'm going to take a sanding stick, in this case, 400 grit sanding stick. And let's zoom in a little bit here. There's a very, very faint mold seam line there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the sanding stick and just rotate it like this what that does it allows for more even removal of that seam line that seam line is so faint it's incredible and it keeps from making flat spots now a lot of people will um, sand it like this and I've done that before but 
I just like doing it this way because it gives me a little bit more control. I don't seem to be able to do the other way as well. And uh, there's more of a more of a chance of getting a flat spot. Now one trick, and I'll, I may show it to you later, but um, a good way to tell if you've got your part sanded is when you sand it like that. Okay, now see, this side over here is kind of dull. This side is shiny. That's because it wasn't perfectly flat. Now, if it's all dull, that means you've done a pretty good job of getting down to the surface on both sides of the mold seam line. So if it's all uniformly dull, then it's pretty likely that you've got it sanded down adequately. Just continue all the way around. I'm going to do the same thing on the other wheels, but I'll do those off camera when I get to them just because, you know, I don't need to show you on every single wheel the same exact thing. I use this method for pretty much any wheels that I do. So there we go. That's done. So next, I need parts B1 and B2. And those are just... B1 is for one side, B2 is for the other. B2, um, I'm going to assume, is for the left side of the hull. B1 is for the right side. So let's cut off B2. Well, I'll go ahead and cut them both off. B1 and B2, which are right here. Now, it's okay to cut both these off because you can't really get them mixed up because they are completely distinct in the left and right appearance. It's easy to tell which one's which. This one is B2. This one is B1. So same thing. Now you got to watch for stuff like this because not all manufacturers do this, but this is a bit of the molding process here. So you got to cut that off. And the instructions oftentimes will show you when it's got a weird thing like that, that it needs to be cut off. This time, however, they don't. Okay, so then got to cut this sprue gate off here. There's a little bit of detail there, so you want to be careful and not cut that off. And then on the bottom of this right here, like that. Okay, so got those cut off. Now, next thing I need to do is there's a very faint mold seam line on this cylinder part right here, or whatever it is, this arm. So I'm just going to use the edge of a blade and scrape that off. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of going around to maintain the curvature. I don't want to just scrape, scrape, scrape and make a flat spot. That would not be a good thing. And then this little bit of sprue gate right here. Going to very carefully. Now, I'm cutting toward my finger, which is a bad idea. However, I'm using the tip of my finger and my my tip of my finger against my thumb here to act as a stop and just very carefully not applying much pressure because that's why, that's why it's important to have a nice new sharp blade because then you don't have to worry about having to apply excessive pressure and risking slipping and cutting yourself because these blades are pretty sharp and they're pretty small so they can it can really do a number. So anyway, scrape that smooth there. Then the ends of these here, just to get those nice and flat, I'm going to use my sanding stick and just as carefully as possible, 
keeping it flat on the surface. Get that sanded. Get rid of that seam line there. And then there's a little bit of excess on the upper and lower edge where the seam line goes across. Just gonna smooth that out. That one's kind of big, so I'm gonna actually sand it like that. And there's that. So then the next part I need to do for this side so I need B15 and 17, whoops. So here's 15 and 17, 15 goes with this one. 17 will go with the other one. So again, I'm cutting it back. And this is where these kind of cutters really help is um, there's less chance of damaging these very small, delicate parts because these cut through the plastic so well same thing uh, let's do it this way i'm using my thumbnail to hold give it a solid so i can press this right up against the part and a lot of times you won't even need to clean that sprue gate up because it will be gone but i'm gonna have to scrape the mold seam line off there and then a little bit of sprue gate there I'm gonna trim it I'm actually gonna sand it use this real thin sanding stick here get that sanded trim off on the edge like that. So those parts are done. So we've got those three parts. Then we have one more part, which is A9, which is the hub cap. Now I'm not sure if it's actually what it's technically called, but that's basically what it does. It's capping off the end of the hub. Same thing. Get it as close as possible, cut it off. Close as possible, cut it off, and we're ready for assembly. So, what we do is we take this part here, we put this wheel on here. Actually, huh, we should do this first. Now, this, this, uh, has a certain way that it needs to go there's a notch there that fits right here and then there's a pin here that fits in this hole here so to make it a little easier i'm going to get my tweezers to me a tweezers that fits in there that fits there all nice and bottomed out then I'm gonna take my to extra thin I'll talk more about to me extra thin in a little bit so you regular customers just bear with me I do it in every video at least the first one apply a little bit there and there and voila, we're good. So now, with that glued in place, actually I'm gonna let that dry just for a second, let it set up, and then we'll go on to the wheel. All right, next, we gotta do the wheel. Now, you kinda gotta determine if you're gonna have rotating wheels or not. In a case like this, it's not really necessary because, um, You know, it's not necessary to have moving components for the running gear on this. It wouldn't really do any good anyway. 
but you could. But I am not going to. I'm just going to glue all this stuff on here. So what I'm going to do, you know what, I think I will just to see if I can do it. I don't think there's enough clearance for that to work, so I'm just going to glue it on here. So first, I'm going to take my wheel, hold it on the axle, apply a little bit of cement here, get it to stick, and then I'm going to fumble around with the hubcap until I can figure out how to get it in place. Can't do it while it's sitting there like that. There we go. All right, so there we go. All right, so then, just a little bit, not too much, because I don't want it filling all that little area around the edge of that wheel there. I don't want that all filled in because I want it to hold the wash good. All right, so there it is. So that is um, the first road wheel. It's on its own individual swing arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one off camera to save a little bit of time. Then we'll come back and move on to the uh, middle and aft portions. Next up, um, A17, A15, and two A2s have been cut from the spra and is ready to go. So, first we take this part here and it faces this direction. Then we take one of these here wheels. Now, there's two sides of these wheels. This is kind of important. They look similar. But this side here is just flat, no detail. This side here, you may not be able to see it on the video, but there are little indentations all around. So there's detail on the outside part. Now you're not really going to see it that much once this is put together, but it is there. So then we take this part here. We've got an indentation there and then one there, <clears throat> small and large, so it's only going to fit one direction. So let's put it on here like this. And like that. So that's how it goes together. That's all there is to it. So now all I gotta do is just glue it together. So again, I'm gonna use my Tamiya Extra Thin. And you know, I think I am going to not glue the wheels on this one because um, if I can spin these, it'll make it a little easier to paint. This one's glued, so you know I'm gonna have to, you know, monkey around with it. most of the painting is on the outside on this one, so it's not as big a deal. So with these, since it goes behind some of that detail there, it'll be easier if I can roll them. So I'm just gonna glue the center part here. like that okay so there's that so that goes on that side so now I need to cut off uh, the parts for the next segment or section uh, a12 a14 another a2 which is this then we need two a1s and a5 which is the idler wheel. So let me get those all cut off and we'll take a look at how to assemble those. All right, so I've got these parts cut out now. 
for um, the idler wheel and the last road wheel, which is A12, A14, and A2, which is a road wheel, and the idler components. Now, the idler components I'm going to put together first. Now, something to note is there is um, a way to do this. Now, there are some raised portions around the entire part that fit in between these spokes. So, just put those in there like that and make sure that they line up because it'll it'll kind of go together without them lining up, but it doesn't fit perfectly. So if you line it up, then boom, you're looking good. So what I'm gonna do, so I got that in position, then I'm gonna just take a little bit of cement and put on each one of those. Probably not necessary to do every one, but doing it anyway. Like that, and then I'm gonna make sure that it's all pressed in evenly. That gives you that nice, really nice rim detail going on there. Then you gotta put one on the other side. And I need to make sure this one is lined up as well. That looks good. Make sure it's pressed in really well. It kind of snap fits in there. Um, but you gotta make sure that you glue it. So this time I'm gonna glue it on the inside right here where those two pieces meet. all the way around like that and then i'm gonna use my tweezers and make well i don't know if that'll work just make sure it's all smashed together because you'll be able to see a gap in there if it's not pressed together properly so that's all pressed together all right so that's done so now i can take this part here oh i missed a part so you gotta watch for these things Part of the molding process as i was mentioning earlier okay so this part this wheel again you got to watch and make sure you get the detail facing out like that and then this is kind of the same let's see now this one you need to make sure this one is positioned properly because there's a little bit of um, a raised portion around the base of this pin here that should fit in this depression here so it fits really snug and close if you don't do that then the wheel doesn't fit properly and doesn't line up with the road wheel so it's got to go the right way and it doesn't really show that in the instructions it just shows the wheel going on there so that's just something you need to be aware of um, it does show you know just this little round flat area without a depression so technically I guess it is I don't want to say obvious but it is apparent and then same thing we take this and I can get a grip on it put that there and then line up the axles with the indentations on the ends whoa on the inside there there we go and just squeeze it all together like that Make sure it looks even that way and then I'm going to do the same thing here I'm just going to glue that pin part in there 
Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, if you didn't have this wheel going the right way, that would wreak havoc on the alignment of these parts. So, anyway. So there is that. So that is all of the parts for one side. So let me get the others, uh, the others assembled, and then we'll mount those to the hull. All right, so I'm doing the drive sprockets next, and uh, this is one of the things that drives me crazy about some manufacturers, and I guess there's not, I don't know, but the sprue gates between the sprocket teeth. So that is just a pain because um, nippers aren't small enough to fit down in there. So you have to either sand it or cut it out. I'm opting to cut it out with this handy dandy nice new blade and I'm being trying to be ultra careful here but uh, it's just it's just a pain um, some manufacturers do them on the end of the tooth of the drive sprocket now these are so fine maybe that just just wasn't an option you know and I'm sure there is a reason why but I can't remember if dragon does the molding between the teeth on all of their stuff because it's been a while since I've, I've built one that I've really paid attention because like something like a tiger or a king tiger or something like that it would probably be um, a big enough gap that you could get nippers in between there but on something like this it's just so flipping tight it's just hard to hard to do it and you take a chance of damaging the the sprocket teeth so yeah so let me finish cleaning this up and then we'll start assembling all right so we got that done so now we're ready to glue these things on here so the drive sprocket it just uh, is going to fit into place and glue so what i'm going to do there is I am going to use this cement here. It's a thicker cement. And basically I'm just gonna put a little bit on the inside there like that. And uh, attach it. Okay, then, you know what? I forgot one part here. I need to cut off B3 and B4, which are these springs here. So B3, B4. And it looks like it would be best to glue this on first before you put any of these suspension parts on. So there's our couple of uh, locating pins and corresponding holes in the spring. If I can get it positioned here. There we go. Boom. Like that. Okay. So there we go. So I'm going to use some Tamiya Extra Thin. Now you'll notice that the way I use this Tamiya Extra Thin is I put the part in place and then run the glue along the joint. The reason I do that is because that's kind of the way this stuff's designed to work. So instead of putting the glue all over the part and then fumbling around sticking it in place um, put it in place and let the glue seep in it just seems to work uh, a little better so first we need this part here and that is quite simple there's a large pin there small pin there and they correspond with these holes here like that so again, those are in place. Run some glue there and there. Okay, make sure it's pressed nicely in place like that. 
Then we move on to this section here. And basically that pin goes there like that. Now there's no way to make sure that is level. So it's going to be important that I use my tabletop here to make sure it is level and that all the wheels are touching because you don't want any floating wheels. Same with this here. Okay, and that's one of those things that they don't tell you on the instructions. They just assume you're going to know what to do. So, got that in place there like that. Make sure it's all nice and even and that everything is touching. All looks pretty good. Make sure it's pressed all the way home. Okay, I'm going to check one more time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a light that I've got over here on the side to make sure that that is touching. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so now I can put some cement there and there. We should be good. Then we have to take these return rollers and glue those in place. Now, because of the way those are being glued on there, I am going to use this cement again. Or, you know what, let me show you another kind of cement I use for this type of stuff. This works really good if you really want to have pinpoint accuracy. And it's this Tester's Model Master with this awesome applicator. And it's a, it's really similar to, um, I'm thinking it's really similar in, viscosity and application it's really similar to Ravel Contacta cement so it's just nice because it gives you some really nice pinpoint accuracy if I can get the glue to come out come on there we go just a dot on each one Put it in place like that. Just make sure they are parallel with the whole sides. Make sure these actually line up pretty good. Some some of them you really gotta they're balanced pretty precariously on the end, so and everything looks good. So now I got to do is do the other side, and uh, we should be done with step one. And with that, we complete step one. So that's the lower hole with the uh, almost all the running gear. There's a couple parts that need to be put on um, after this. However, that is that. So I think um, with that, I'm going to call this video quits right here because it ends one, step one, and uh, it'll keep this uh, video from being too long. So I hope you enjoyed following along with part one of the Panzer Kampfwagen 1 Ausf A project. Um, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more of this build, hit the subscribe button and uh maybe the notification button so that way you can be notified when I put up more videos so stay tuned there'll be more videos of this particular project to come next time starting on step two so as always thank you for watching plastic models by a regular dude and I'll see you all later